Hello and welcome to the show. For today's autocross car build, I've got something completely and utterly unsuitable. You guys wanted to see me have a go as a building a El Camino to tackle the course, so I'm going to give it a try, despite this thing being notoriously not particularly good when it comes to handling. However, there are going to be some plus points certainly going for us with this car. After all, we're going to have some pretty damn sizable tyres, and we are going to be able to get plenty of upgrades on this car. It starts off in a relatively low D class, so there's going to be plenty of room for upgrades. There's certainly plenty of power and torque from standard, let alone by the time we have finished with this one. Two 7.5s at the front. I'd like slightly bigger tyres potentially, still though that's not too bad, and three 4.5s at the rear. So traction perhaps isn't going to be too much, fingers crossed, of a problem in this particular vehicle. It's all going to be about can we get the front end to actually turn in to the corners. That is where the potential problems are going to lie. I mean, also, you know, it's a giant, giant vehicle. It is relatively heavy. We can... Oopsie. Didn't want to go back quite that far. Game! No! Game! Come back! Come back! We want to go back to the upgrade shop. Thank you. Um, we are going to, of course, be saving some weight with the, uh, the, the full race weight reduction and bits and pieces through here. This is still going to be a heavy vehicle. Now, the power-to-weight ratio is perhaps not going to be the worst that we have seen because we are going to get tremendous amounts of power into this one, I suspect. And we're also going to have plenty of torque to go with it as well, seeing as we're up to... We've got full race tyres on this thing and we're already just about up to the top of C-Class at the moment. This should hopefully jump the PI up, uh, almost 100 PI, 3,200 pounds in the El Camino. It is... Uh, yeah, an interesting, I say an interesting prospect, I'm actually now beginning to wonder whether this standard engine is actually going to be in, able to get the required power out of it. What options do we have? We could go for the 5.7 litre V8. Oh, we can't quite get, <laughs> we can't quite get the NASCAR engine in to, uh, into this one, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, I would like to keep the standard engine if I can do. We're gonna go. Should we go for a supercharger? Bugger it. We're <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go full out with this one. To be fair, we don't really have a much of a choice if we are going to keep the car. Or if we're gonna get the car to the top of A class, sorry. It doesn't look like we are actually going to have a choice in this one. Yes, it does add a bit of weight. However. I, I I need to be getting the uh, need to be getting the PI is going to be a tremendous maybe one of the one of the most powerful vehicles. In fact, I am still concerned about not quite getting the PI out of this one. <laughs> we have to go for some of the big engine upgrades. I'm tend to avoid these ones. Are you going to save? Ah, you are going to save us some weight. That's fantastic. Seven hundred horsepower. Almost 700 torque as well. That is silly amounts of power and so on going on in this vehicle. Now, not to 60 time, it reckons 3.6 seconds. It reckons 3.6 seconds with this one. So I'm thinking we may as well go for that gearbox. We are, of course, going to be wanting a diff. We may come back to these parts if we need sort of the an, an odd bit of PI to max out the car essentially because uh, yeah we are still <laughs> still going with power still we are going we're up to 756 horsepower it's well over 700 torque as well in here this is going to be ridiculous I, I thought this was going to be well, I knew it was going to be powerful I know I can get the NASCAR engine unrestricted in C-Class but I thought once I did start putting on these handling parts that we were going to have actually got all of the engine upgrades i don't want to go for intercooler and oil and cooling because that's just adding i mean it adds a fair about fair amount or a decent amount of power but it's adding weight as well so i think we're gonna to have to try and make up pi with the other bits and pieces that we can potentially try and get it to the top of a class uh, 694 PI now. This is a little bit fiddly, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I knew this was going to get decent power. 
I thought it was going to get decent power. I did not expect it to quite get this this level of power in A-Class with all the handling bits pretty much that I can put on it. I think we are actually going to have to... I said we're going to have to go. We're going to have to go for the intercooler. 800 horsepower. 767 torque in our El Camino. That is a lot. In an A-Class car with as much handling parts as I can put on it, that is a stupendous amount of power and torque. It is relatively heavy, although the power-to-weight ratio is still immense in this car. When you take into you know in, into consideration this much power in A-Class is, is, yeah, pretty damn impressive. I am slightly concerned if we're getting this much power, just how awful the handling is going to be. But, uh, yeah, let, let's see how the Chevrolet does. So, of course, to test out the El Camino, we have come to the Hockenheim circuit, where it will get three runs through the autocross course in an attempt for, well, me to try and not wreck it. Pretty much, I suspect, is going to be how things uh, how things will go. You will notice I did actually quickly go back and put on the lightened bonnet, because that can still uh, be applied and keep the car at A-class, loses £7, might as well go and do it. As far as, kind of, expectation-wise, this is going to struggle. This car is, I very highly doubt, going to be going up towards the top of the table. I don't think we're going to have the control. We perhaps might be looking at the 210s area, is what I'm possibly thinking with the El Camino. We might not have too bad a retraction. I mean, the acceleration is going to be phenomenal, but it's the gates. The gates where we are probably going to have some issues. If, uh, if we can keep it around the control, though, who knows? There could be some surprises from the El Camino. I think it's going, <laughs> I think it's going to tr struggle, but still, you know, there is a incredible amount of horsepower in this car, and I am flat out in second gear out of these corners, and it is finding the traction. Look at the speed! It is firing us down towards this section, but I can't take any of it through the gates whatsoever. There is just. <laughs> There is not a hope, basically, to take any of that speed. The front end, you can feel it, you just try to turn in and it's just simply not going to do it. It's a good thing I kind of know where this course goes as well. The bonnet might have saved some weight, but it is a little bit awkward to see what on earth you are doing. Get a decent run, and that's not too bad of a run through that section as we now head out onto... Oh, I can't turn. Okay, <laughs> we cannot be flat out up there. The El Camino is never ever going to uh, to make that flat uh, through that section. Uh, even with a lift though, I have no doubt this will probably set a new record for fastest car because there is just so much power and I am amazed at uh, the amount of traction that, uh, that we are getting. Second gear out of these corners, it is working absolutely fine for putting this power down to the road which yeah is uh, is not bad <laughs> not bad going at all as we weave our way through these gates still can't really see too much a fair bit of guesswork that's actually really awkward that corner might have to take a slightly different line through to actually see where on earth i am aiming for that is very uh, very awkward to get that one right but uh, that we we live and learn we will know for next time around as we're now going to head up towards this final final section this is much more of a in, in many respects a silly a silly car build than anything around here with this much power it is it is quite keen on going sideways out of some of these lower speed stuff but not as keen as i thought it uh, might possibly be as i said still really impressed with the traction across the line three gates were clipped in that 15 seconds worth of time penalties plus a little bit of, uh, of dodgy driving from me in places ah this is a handful, as is kind of expected, really. So, on to the second run for the crazy Chevrolet. I definitely think we can be going a bit quicker. I, there is a, a lack of grip. It's the front end getting turned in. As, as strange as this is to say in such a monster of a vehicle, it is the front end not getting turned in to these quarters that is the problem, amazingly. The back end, well, yes, I can slide the car about. The back end, on the whole, is quite predictable and not a massive issue. It's just a lack of front-end grip. I can't, I can't throw this car through that section with any 
real confidence. In fact, that was I was quite slow on the way in, but it did help me get a half decent run on the uh, on the way out. And then through here is another. Basically, any of the slower sections is where we start losing bits of time. Now it's not terrible amounts of time. You know, we're not losing absolutely stacks. There have been worse cars through some of these gates. Again, I'm thinking perhaps slow into these sections and kind of power out of them might be the way to go. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, crazy, crazy quick when you can unleash all of the power. I just can't quite make the most of it. Even on these straighter sections, I can't... Oh, bugger me, this stupid bottle. It was a stupid idea. Why did I go for it? I, I know why. I was trying to save a little bit of weight. Didn't realise quite how awkward it was going to be. I think this might be one of the worst cars we've had for that, uh, that as an issue. Nevertheless, it's going to have to be something that I, uh, that I deal with as I'm trying to now frantically put the power down coming towards this uh, back section. <laughs> you keep it nailed there, it's just like, we're almost up to 120 miles an hour. You get the idea of just how quick this car can be if I get things spot on. Now we can't make the most of this uh, acceleration necessarily down that uh, the main straight, if you will, because there is a high speed gate that this doesn't turn for. But elsewhere, cracking 120 miles an hour before the tunnel is really very, very good going. Indeed, oh, slow it down for this uh, final section. I know that this the lap time is not going to be massively impressive. I'm doing everything I can. It's just I don't simply think I can get the speed out of it. It feels quick. It feels like you're going really fast around this autocross course. I think that's just because it's so stupidly crazy. Across the line, 218.8. Five seconds worth of time penalties on on that one. We might be pushing our luck trying to get a uh, 210. It might be doable, though. So it is on to the final run for our crazy 800 horsepower El Camino. There is, I think, a little bit of time to be found if I can thread this car through the autocross course that little bit better. If we can have a bit more bravery, perhaps a little bit more front-end grip, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't go amiss here. I'm going to see what I can do. It really is not suited to this course. In many ways, I think the racing truck was better suited to this course than the El Camino. Still going to give it as good of a shot as I can, though, through here. Oh, God, 90 miles an hour is just terrifying through that section. Like 110 miles an hour in the Mura or the other, you know, the Beetle and so on that have done that sort of speed through there is, is pretty scary because of the speed. This feels like it is going as quick as that through that section, despite being 20 miles an hour down, because it's just so much on the limit and so out of its comfort zone there. Relatively good though, 70 miles an hour on the exit of that section, and while the acceleration is good here, I can't get the front end turned in very well, so we're not going to be having the ludicrous speeds down that section. I don't actually have the grip to be able to make the corners there. Nothing I can really do about that in the El Camino. I am turning in blind to most of these corners. <laughs> it's, just, it's a bloody good thing I know where I'm going around here. Having said that, I've now outbraked myself ever so slightly. But never mind. Try and make the most of that acceleration. Straighten it up for the exits of these corners. That is where we're going to make up some time. I know I can't make it up through the corners, so we'll make it up under acceleration. And it is absurdly fast down this back straight as we now got to try and line it up for the tunnel. It is a relatively wide car but it's not quite as crazy as the likes of the Hummer or the racing truck in terms of that so it is once you've got it straightened up once you can kind of see where you're going it is a bit easier to uh, fire it through that section. Now we have just got a couple more gates to go. Don't do anything stupid with the power. Don't spin the car. I mean we're going to spin <laughs> we're going to spin the wheels up but Gotta bear in mind the power and torque that's going through the back of this pickup. And I am being, I mean, you can see on the telemetry how aggressive I am being with the throttle. The car is amazingly okay with dealing with all of this. It's a run towards the line. Ah, oh, it's not quite a 210. It's a 211.296 from the <laughs> El Camino. Oh, that was a that was a run and a half, that one. This is a monster <laughs> of a car. I am amazed how much power there is in this, keeping it in A-Class with, you know, pretty much a full handling build here. That is an absolute monster. You cannot use anywhere near the power that this has to offer. I have no doubt this would be by far the fastest accelerating of all of the cars. 
but you can't use it even on the, the the straighter sections you can't use it because i don't have the grip to get through the higher speed stuff i mean it's actual kind of initial drive out of the gates probably helps it recover some of the time that is lost through especially the quicker sections you just can't get the front end turned in and while we do have some decent sized tires on this car uh, that's not enough to to really save it it just isn't the grip available having the huge tires at the back is great because it gives us the traction it gives me the confidence to boot it out of the corners and as i said that's where we are making up some time but uh, it's just not the grip in the el camino to to really be competitive still though getting a 211 i don't think it's too bad for the car it'll put it in to 58th place it goes a fraction down on the holden monaro it beats the civic type r the jaguar xjs the classic mercedes race car it beats the old front wheel drive focus rs uh, it is a little bit down on the likes of the volvo 123 the tesla model s uh, the jaguar f type and so on it's um yeah it could have been a lot worse it could have been a lot worse with this car and when you look at the power figures and the sort of vehicle that this is it really shouldn't be suitable for for autocross it's not by far the fastest car at all here, but it is okay. It is manageable through this through this course. An interesting an interesting challenge, definitely. Trying to autocross an El Camino, perhaps one of the crazier. As I said, I think this is slightly crazier trying to autocross this than the racing truck. The racing truck was well a little bit slower, or a fair bit slower than this. In fact, was still a bit better suited, a bit more manageable at this circuit. But still, you know, the El Camino didn't quite try to murder me through through all of this which i'm going to take away as a plus point however that is uh, going to be it for this video guys thank you very much for watching and until next time uh goodbye